Mexico, one plate at a Ecotourism is the perfect way to root yourself deep into a certain place to learn a lot about its culture. And there's certainly no shortage of ecotourism opportunities here in Oaxaca. A little ways outside of Puerto Escondido, up this slow, winding road, lies a beautiful plantation where you can experience Oaxaca through nature. Finca Las Nieves is a coffee plantation, but it's a whole lot more than that. Once you clear the dense forest, everything opens up onto a bright landscape that hosts this impeccably maintained farm, plus a wide range of native vegetation. Gustavo, the head agronomist at the finca, is an expert when it comes to organic farming. So he took me around and he showed me how the plantation focuses on self-sustaining methods of agriculture. This is stunning. I mean, the color on that is breathtaking. But why do you grow so many vegetables? Um, well, the idea is so that ourselves can rely on our own food, no? Okay. I think you mentioned to me that everything you do is organic. Is that right? It's counterproductive to be not non-organic. It's, uh, it's more expensive. Now, now why do you it's, say that it's counterproductive? Because in the United levels, States, no? a lot of people say, nah, just buy the chemical fertilizers and put it on there, and it's, it's okay. Well, it's if, that's if you're not taking the soil into account, and, uh -huh. and a lot of health issues, no? Establishing this takes some time. We call it double digging. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> from, uh, that's like what I do in my garden at home. I do the double digging. Because it gives you really, really loose soil so things can go down easily and uh -huh, put see. their roots in. See. I see some uh, some cilantro flowers over there. I want to go taste them. Let's uh, <laughs> let's head that way. To maintain that healthy soil, Gustavo produces his own all-natural fertilizer, and he rotates crops based on the level of nutrients that they need or provide. Even the watering system here at the finca is sustainable. Water's piped down from the hills using gravity, and when it reaches the farm. It's used to power several machines, including a generator, the corn grinder, the hauler for the coffee beans. But Finca Las Nieves is not just a working farm. It's also an out-of-the-way retreat where you can stay in peaceful guest rooms that overlook the plantation. We ran into Robin, the owner, who told us about all the possibilities that these grounds have to offer. It's uh, such a pleasure to have I, you here. I'll tell you, this place is just drop-dead gorgeous. But then how did the idea of opening it up to become sort of an ecotourism place where people could stay, how did you get that idea? Well, it started with us coming up here and then just being so in love with the place uh -huh. and said, well, we've got uh -huh. to share this and it only being a, an nice. hour and a half away from Puerto Escondido. Right. You know. I'm sure that anybody that comes up here is going to find something that's going to be just right for them, but what's right for me has to do with my stomach. <laughs> and so um, I want to go into the kitchen. Or so let's go ahead. <laughs> A stay at the Finca features not just a retreat surrounded by nature, but some pretty fabulous food. One of the Finca's cooks, Margarita, knows an interesting preparation for vegetarian tamales. She began by making a filling, which was a saute of Mexican zucchini, green pepper, and carrot, to which she added a puree of tomato. Once the filling was ready, she prepared the corn masa with a drizzle of olive oil instead of the usual pork fat. That masa was spread onto banana leaves and topped with the string cheese and the filling, then wrapped up into neat little packages. After the steaming, the tamales smelled delicious, and they tasted complex and satisfying. Margarita also makes this delicious vegetarian soup that uses an ingredient unique to Oaxacan cooking, chapil. Chapil's a green that has these flavorful leaves and flowers. The broth for the soup starts with simmering zucchini, red onion, and garlic in salted water. Then we use more of that fresh ground corn masa to make little dumplings called chochoyotes for the soup. They're rolled into balls and then pressed in the middle to make these little bowl-shaped bites. Chapil is added to the simmering broth, then the dumplings go in one at a time. And after a few minutes, Beautiful soup is ready to serve. Up in the hills above Oaxaca City, at about 8,000 feet in elevation, 
the terrain becomes damp and drizzly and full of all kinds of interesting vegetation. The climate is so different from the rest of Oaxaca that this place is a popular destination for locals and tourists. This area also provides a bonus to visitors because of the many species of bromeliads that love this climate. Carlos, one of the local botanists and guides, took me on a short hike through the woods to look at these beautiful plants. The first bromeliad we found was the pendulous kind, and this one had grown to almost two meters in length. Once the plant is mature, the flowers dry up and the little seed pods disperse thousands of feathery seeds. They fly through the air and attach to new tree branches. Then after about seven years or so, the whole cycle begins again. Even though they were out of season, Carlos spotted some tiny orchid flowers along our hike. Orchids also propagate with little airborne seeds. But their survival is more tenuous since they rely on certain sticky types of fungus on tree branches. Between the tree, the fungus, and these bright yellow flowers, you can really see a complicated little ecosystem. We went on and found a more traditional bromeliad that you might recognize. Carlos explained that these are the ones that are popular in bouquets and as gifts for special occasions. And they're even able to be cultivated in some of the local nurseries. All in all, I found our hunt for these little treasures to be fantastic, incredibly interesting. Also up in these mountains lies this sweet little eco-tourist destination. It's called Comedor Linda Vista. It's a restaurant with some fabulous scenic views that serves up all kinds of local specialties. Well, my and pretty much every other Oaxacan's favorite snack is a tlayuda. Let me explain to you how it's made. It starts with this special tortilla that they make here, also called a tlayuda. It's a kind of leathery tortilla that's baked on a clay griddle, which gives it a very special kind of texture. Then it gets layered with all kinds of things. First, asiento, which is the fresh lard that has all the cracklings in it, so it's very roasty flavored. Then you can put pretty much whatever you want to on it, but it's typical to smear some beans on there. Then there's some of the quesillo, the string cheese that they're so famous for here. Lettuce, tomato, avocado, and then you can get meat on it if you want. I asked for some chorizo sausage. Then it goes back on the comal, or a grill, to get crisped. This stuff is so delicious. I've got a little bit of salsa I can put on that if I want to make it a little spicy. The perfect flavor of Oaxaca. You know, there are some dishes that you just have to eat in the place that they were created. And I have to say that the Oaxacan Tlayuda is definitely one of those, that really huge corn tortilla scattered with all kinds of delicious toppings that only taste of being in Oaxaca. So when I came back to Chicago, I decided I wanted to do something that was inspired by the Oaxacan Tlayuda. And you know, we have really wonderful tortillerias here in Chicago. So I went down to one that makes beautiful fresh ground corn masa from local corn. And I bought some of their tortillas, different than the Tlayuda in Oaxaca, and ours are certainly a lot smaller. And I want to crisp them, but I know that they will crisp the best if I just spread them out on a baking sheet like this, cover them with a towel, and let them dry out a little bit. Then I started thinking about those beautiful meats that they scatter on the Tlayuda in Oaxaca, that great Oaxacan chorizo or the thin cut pork cecina that's marinated in a red chili adobo. And I thought about how incredibly delicious bacon is. So I bought some of that and I'm gonna cut it into small pieces. I'm gonna scrape all of this together into a skillet. and I'm gonna put it over kind of a medium to a medium low fire. I want the bacon to completely crisp. I'll check on it every once in a while as it's cooking to stir it in to make sure that it's evenly cooking. Now bacon in Chicago in the summertime always leads me to tomatoes because we have so many beautiful heirloom tomatoes from people's gardens, from the farmer's markets. I'll wash off my knife here 
and start cutting up this beautiful array of colorful heirloom tomatoes. And when I think about bacon and heirloom tomatoes and summertime in Chicago, I'm always thinking about BLTs. And BLTs, to me, require an absolutely delicious homemade mayonnaise. So that's what I'm going to make now, but I'm going to make it with Mexican flavors. So I'm going to start this with a couple of egg yolks. So I'll separate those. and I'm gonna squeeze in fresh lime juice. It'll take about a tablespoon for this. Top of the processor goes on, and I'm gonna drizzle in oil. You could make this with vegetable oil or olive oil, though all olive will be a little strong. We have avocado. We have a little bit of serrano chili and I'm gonna put in a handful of cilantro. So everything's gonna to need to get roughly chopped. Take out the little button end of the avocado. and scoop half of the avocado into the food processor. Top goes on, and I'm gonna pulse it until it's the right texture. And that's looking really delicious. I'm gonna season it with a little salt, a few pulses, and mix in the salt. And then I'm gonna scrape that into a bowl. And now it's time for the tortillas. Once the bacon is done, I remove it to a paper towel to drain off the extra fat. The tortillas have dried out a little now, so I can lay them on a medium hot grill and flip them every once in a while until they're browned and crisp to the touch. Then I use a brush to lightly oil each one with the leftover bacon drippings. Now to build these little treasures. I'm gonna start with a little of our spicy avocado mayonnaise. And then some of the heirloom tomatoes. And now that smoky bacon. And finally, a few leaves of cilantro. It's the perfect taste of Chicago summer, inspired by Oaxaca. Comedor Linda Vista isn't just a restaurant. It's also a very picturesque trout farm. The owner gave me a tour of this unique operation. He started the place a few years ago, and now he has between three and 4,000 trout. The water flows through a series of tanks to keep everything clean and fast moving. The little small baby fish start in the smallest tank at the top. And then after about three months, they're moved through a series of tanks, each one larger than the next. And after growing for about eight months, the fish get served at the popular restaurant that's attached to the farm. The kitchen has a cool variety of trout dishes on the menu. Their version of trout with mushrooms starts with butterflying the fish. Then they place it onto foil where it's loaded up with chipotle mayonnaise, onions, that quesillo cheese, and mushrooms. It's wrapped tightly and then placed on the grill to cook. Oh, does that smell delicious? 
Well, I could say it would almost be a private moment here. This is so luxurious. You get the smell of the fresh trout, onion, cilantro. This is, this is remarkable. Trout cooks really quickly and it's quite reasonably priced, so I turn to it a lot when I'm looking for a quick and really nutritious meal. And then, if you season it with a little bit of Mexican chorizo, it really becomes a special meal that's, well, worthy of company. So I'm gonna show you one of my favorite dishes here that starts off with a little of this fresh Mexican chorizo. I'm gonna take out of its casing and put into a skillet. Put that over a kind of medium heat here. I'm gonna let that cook until it begins to brown. That'll take about eight or 10 minutes. Now while this chorizo is cooking, I'm gonna slice up an onion, a red onion for this. Now my chorizo didn't release very much oil here and I'm gonna need some for cooking that onion. So I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of oil. You could use vegetable oil or olive oil for this. Then scoop in those sliced onions. I'm gonna sprinkle on a little bit of sugar. And I'm gonna let these cook until they have softened nicely, those onions have, and have begun to brown. Onions are looking very good there. I've got a special touch for the flavoring of this dish. Dark Mexican beer. And the maltiness that you get in that beer just pairs beautifully with the sweetness now of the onions and the chorizo sausage. I put about a cup full of beer in there to underscore the deep richness I'm looking for. I'm gonna add a couple of teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. Give it a nice sprinkling of salt. And I'm gonna let this cook until the liquid has almost completely reduced. While the liquid is reducing here, I'm gonna chop some cilantro because I think that will be a, a nice fresh flavor to put in it. I'm gonna chop this whole bunch in my typical style of doing it, which is to bunch up the leaves and then start slicing across the cilantro. So it's not really chopping as much as it's slicing here and slicing all the way until we run out of most of the leaves here. Move that over. This will go to our compost. I'm gonna take about half of this cilantro and sprinkle it over the onions and chorizo mixture. It's time to cook the trout fillets, but I don't want this to get cool. So I'm gonna put it into a baking dish and put it into the oven. Just set on the lowest temperature there. I'm gonna wipe out this nonstick pan and use it to cook the trout fillets. Heating it up over about a medium heat with a little olive oil, just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. Open up this package. Spread out the trout fillets so that I can sprinkle them with just a little bit of salt here. And then when the oil is hot, I'm gonna lay the trout fillets in. I think that our trout fillets are probably ready now. Nicely golden. I'm gonna sprinkle some black pepper over the top of the fillets here and they're ready to put on a serving platter.
My friends Mary Jane and Bobby Ortiz own a horse ranch in the breathtaking Tlacolula Valley. It's an arid valley just outside of Oaxaca City. I thought it'd be great to stay at their Rancho Pitaya so that I could better experience this remarkably intact natural landscape. Mary Jane and Bobby took me on a horseback tour of the countryside to explore the impressive array of biodiversity that this arid climate has to offer. There is practically every variety of wild-growing agaves, from the Madre Quiche to the Tobala. And once you get up in the hills, you run into an old forest of those tall, spear-like organ cacti that are pollinated with the help of hummingbirds. There's no palm cactus, barrel cactus, and giant yucca up here. And when you look out over the valley at all the alfalfa fields and greenhouses, you get an idea of just how much agriculture this land produces. And then if we squint, we'll see some more green patches out here in the valley. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is criollo garlic. Garlic. <laughs> I didn't realize that there was that much garlic that was grown in this valley. I think this is one of the most amazing things that anyone that comes to Oaxaca could ever do. The, the views are beautiful, the flora and fauna are incredible. Civilization has been here for well over 8,000 years right. and those original people were attracted to this area because there was so much diversity mm -hmm. in plants they could eat, right. plants that healed them, plants they could use for building. It's really stunningly beautiful. Mary Jane and Bobby love to welcome visitors to Rancho Pitaiga with a rustic picnic. Mary Jane's neighbor had set it all up for us, making some homemade tortillas and that beef tasajo that's grilled directly on the coals. And of course, as with most meals in Oaxaca, this casual lunch began with a toast of the local mezcal. Okay. Cheers to uh, Rojas, to and the Caballos. Salud. To this family. It's wow. great. Spending this day with you. Now, tell me what we've got in front of us here. The salsa is made with chili de agua, and this valley, the Valley of Tlacolula, is famous for its chili de agua, yes. right, right over by Tlacochihuayan. Very Oaxacan. You don't see it outside this area. Rick, I think we have some beautiful little handmade tortillas, little blanditas. Those are stunning. Mmm. Delicious. Now, it looks to me like we have uh, the makings for one of my favorite Oaxacan dishes. It looks like tostadas of chile ajo. Is that what this is? It is. Well, um, this looks like it's got potatoes and carrots mm -hmm. in it. out here looking at this vista I mean and all of these flavors it's the perfect expression of this patch of earth and you know that there's just such an incredibly seamless relationship between these flavors and this place.